And welcome, this is the Simply King Podcast, and this is your boy Rodney Perry, King himself, and you just tuned into the Soulfully Conscious Podcast for Humans, Simply Being Humans. And today, uh, I'm trying some new things. I'm trying some new things. You will be able to actually watch this episode on um, IGTV as well as YouTube. Um, I'm, I'm trying, I'm, I gotta be more visual, you know, I gotta keep consistently upgrading the things. So I hope I'm coming through clear. I hope I, the clarity is right. I hope the lighting is hitting me just right. I hope there's nothing strange in this shot because I try my best to get it just right. Either way, um, I've been away for a while. I'm about two weeks off from not putting out episodes. Thanks to my last guest who was, uh, Kajame, um, Laya Ping for my, um, Money Loves Me episode where we talked about um, essentially personal finance and all these different things. Um, and soon after, I think, a, a tra- you know, the, the tragedy that is George Floyd's public lynching occurred um, in Minneapolis and kind of shook the world up and puts us in our current position of being in this uh, ongoing uh, revolution, uh, this neo-revolution. And um, I'm for it. I've been very uh, consistently about uh, speaking to it. I think um, and I think there's been things that have occurred, you know, since the last time I feel like I've had an episode where I spoke to it. And that was my done saying enough episode. Um, I contributed to several different black businesses. I haven't um, protested myself uh, really out of the anxiety of COVID, out of the anxiety of really knowing that I would not allow for a police officer to put their hands on me. So I think I just couldn't get myself worked up enough to put myself in that position. Um, but I support it all. I support the looting. I support the protesting. Um, I'm for it all. And I thought to myself, I have to contribute to this movement in the best way that I can. Um, and that's by being doing what I do best. And that's creating conversations, giving food for thought. And um, one thing that I did and um, initiated last week was a series on IGTV called the Simply Being series, uh, which you can find. I've already had two interviews with one with Rita Rucker, uh, artivist, um, as she would claim, uh, as she would self-claim, artivist, um, hailing from um, Atlanta, Georgia, but currently based in L.A., doing the acting things, but also um, pushing back to the powers that be. Then I have a, an, another active in his own, another artist in his own right, being um, being Juice Lord, Hammer Time Juice <laughs> on IG, a Minneapolis, uh, excuse me, St. Paul, Minnesota uh, based rapper who's um, young, fiery, forever conscious, um, been knowing him for quite some time now and uh, brought him on the show before uh, on the episode Who Got the Juice Um and he, we just ch- sat down and had a really, you know, kind of intimate conversation just about just being black and, and having to bear with the violence that this world kind of keeps giving us. Um, but today, as you see by the title, Black Men Admit, hashtag Black Men Admit, I've been seeing a lot of things. I've been seeing so much when it comes to what people feel about what's going on. And there was a uh, a trend that I've seen and that I'm I think supporting by doing this episode and that is seeing people initiate new conversations. Um, In my conversation with Rita Rucker, what I said to her, I gave her an analogy that we are in, imagine this world and the systems and the isms of this world that oppress us to be like apps on iPhone. When you're ready to delete an app on your iPhone, you hold that app down and then it starts to shake and a X should pop up in the corner of that app. Not only does that app shake, but every other app shakes as well so that you can possibly delete those as well if they serve no purpose to you anymore. Um, And I think that is where we're at. We're open. We're vulnerable as a society because we are all looking and agreeing at something um, and taking it in somewhat in a similar way, taking it in and agreeing to it to a similar pace, but I don't want to give people too much because there is still a lot of people who seen the, uh, the public lynching that was done to George Floyd and also to Breonna Taylor, also to Tony McDade. And we can't forget these names, but that is 
But I think we get so singular and we get so motivated by a singular act and a singular victim. Um, and we get so zeroed in. And what I've been seeing lately is people saying the things like, we don't have time to do other things. We don't have time to talk about other issues. And I don't think that's true. I think we can do more than one thing at once. And also, when do we ever make time to solve some of those issues that we have um, amongst each other? Those intra inch issues within the black community. Um, and this is not a conversation about black on black violence, because that is a myth. But this is a conversation on male account, black male accountability, um, a a uh, a somewhat kind of an, an analysis of of domestic violence within within the black community but just overall where we have a hand in causing any oppression to the people that we are closest to as black men as black cis het men specifically um so i hope y'all enjoy this this is going to be a dope dope episode and I really, truly, truly believe that everyone is going to really, really take all these things in in the best way that they can. Let's get to it. This is Simply King. Okay, okay, so let's jump right into the Twitter check-in. The Twitter check-in, and for anyone who is just for, is a first-time listener, this is the Soulfully Conscious Podcast for Humans Simply Being Humans. I don't know how I can ever forget my time, my tagline that much, but I'm so, I'm so glad that you joined me. These episodes come out every Monday, so make sure you subscribe, make sure you like, make sure you follow on every single thing that you can do that on. Um, but the Twitter check-in. Today's Twitter check-in <laughs> is actually somebody that has been um, somewhat been viral for multiple things <laughs> for the past few uh, for the past week or so, and that is B Simone. Now I won't take too much time because I feel like there's something more important to speak on other than B Simone. Um, no shade to her, but I think you know at first she came, she kind of made news for kind of her nine to five guy comment that a lot of, you know, men I'm assuming, uh, reacted to. And then <laughs> essentially speaking to her preference that she doesn't want to date a guy who isn't an entrepreneur, which is a thing. So eyes were already on her. She was already in the mix. But um what was this kind of this source of this information or that particular interview where she said those statements came from her promoting her book. Um, and she essentially had a book, essentially kind of a very self-help, um, you know, manifest your dreams and goals. And, you know, there's work, there's kind of, you know, work pages in there and motivational quotes and her story to a certain degree based off of kind of the, sum the summary that I got and the information that I found online. But also, <laughs> but also, she also um, she was somewhat exposed, somewhat exposed by people who actually purchased the book. I think the book is around thirty five dollars or whatever. And she essentially plagiarized a lot of the book, a lot of the book. We're talking about full on word for word, Googled it, you know. And um, got got some things from people who already publish and already have rights to this uh, intellectual property. And um, I think, you know, just like how I think most black people are, they love to, you know, let it be known on Twitter. And so various people, and I believe it was one main video that kind of exposed the quality of the book because they said it was very, you know, low quality, which is OK. Self-published, uh, certain things are like that, you know, you deal with that. But I think the part that's the worst is the fact that she plagiarized. And to me, the, what I want to say about this is that I don't want B. Simone to be the example or be this kind of um, knock towards influencers. Influencers, there are some great influencers out there who are truly influencers, who are people who are actually have um, the, the people who are following them 
and have their best interests in mind when it comes to the products that they spons- that that they're sponsored by, the services that they uh, promote, all those different things. There are some great, very conscious, uh, very you know aware <laughs> influences out there who may not be in the millions. They may not even get in the millions. They're still getting brand deals. They're probably in the, in the you know in the hundreds of thousands of followers and things like that. Uh, maybe in the, even in the tens, even in the tens of thousands. I don't want y'all to see those people as. I don't want you to see influencing and influencers as B Simone, because that it's not a. Some people aren't really out here scamming. People really do have brands, ideas. Um, really are putting a lot of thought into the work that they're putting out. So she is just a, you know, just a bad example more than anything. But, you know, she cut the corners and she got found and she kind of got put out. And uh, because the eyes were already on her, I think, you know, she should have kind of expected that. Um, and it's and I think she's definitely looking at some, you know, some, some lawsuits coming soon because she stole from white women. And we know they're very litigious. You feel me? They're going to they're going to. They're going to get that ass. So it is what it is. She got to deal with it. She got to eat that. She got to eat that food, you know, but she'll be all right. She'll be okay. Um, But let's jump right into this hot topic, uh, into this uh, monologue of sorts. Uh, I have a little bit of information to give you guys, but also just mostly my opinion and perspective on this on this ideal. And what I want to say, the whole whole hashtag black men admit, first, I want to present some stats, if you can bear with me. These stats that I'm getting are actually from uh, the National Criminal Justice uh, Reference Service. Um, you can see the link in bio so you can see these graphs and visuals and words and things for yourself. Read the information and the data for yourself. Um and the most interesting thing that I kind of noticed immediately was that there was a uh, overall this is, uh, article and this information was collected in for uh, in 2015. The and they essentially did a lot of data when it came to intimate partners um, and they classified and they split up the information in terms of race, in terms of uh, if it was sexual violence or just psychological violence, if it was just physical violence, you know, all these various things. The reason why I chose this particularly because I think it's the most visceral example of uh, of the oppression and the redirection of oppression that black men actually perform and and pre- perpetuate with two black women, two queer people within the black community. Um, and I'm talking about straight black men, mind you. Now. We're talking about men in general as well. They did not specify in some of these uh, reports uh, all the time if these were, you know, because because obviously men are victims of domestic violence as well. There are less numbers on it, obviously. Well, I won't say obviously because people may not know that, but they're not specifying who is the culprit within the information. So we can't jump to the conclusion that just because it's a man, there are men who are actually victims of domestic violence, that there's solely women, that there are women actually committing the violence themselves to said men. I think that definitely happens. There's definitely women who will wild out and go upside your motherfucking head. But that's not the case. And I don't want to even assume that that's what it is, because I know we, we know that, you know, these things can be fudged a little bit and so on and so forth. But I I wouldn't be I don't think I'll be crazy to assume that they're speaking to men, men doing a lot of these violent acts just because you're just brute strength, just because of trends, just because we can literally just use our common sense with some of these things, you know. But let's get right into it. So the reason why I want to do this hashtag black men admit uh to create some type of narrative and time to try to change the narrative, change the paradigm when it comes to black men and their accountability. We always are fighting for justice. We're always pushing it to the man. We're always letting it be known that we deserve to be treated equally. Now, the problem with that is historically that a lot of black men have co-opted the ideal of whiteness. 
and the white patri patriarchal system. And so they want to be just that. They want to be equal to white men and be able to do all the heinous things that white men do. And that shouldn't be something that is a goal. We shouldn't want to be the now top oppressors of the society that we live in. We should rather want some more equity to be spread out evenly um, amongst us all, and especially to the people who are closest to us. Quite often we have heard so many different stories. One example that was very, very, very hard to even consume, but it had to be done, and I was glad that a lot of those brave women came out and said it, was uh, several Almost a week and a half ago, um, thousands of women were on Twitter and a trend had occurred called I was. And it was so many women who literally spoke on the sexual assault and the sexual violence that occurred to them at whatever age by saying I was in an age. And that um, truly, truly shook me up. That truly made me feel a lot of ways because it was like no one had one age. So that means out of all of these women who are who have experienced some type of sexual assault, they admittedly spoke to it happening more than once. And so in my head, I'm thinking it more than likely probably wasn't even the same person. It could have been, but it's the fact that I'm now even unraveling the nuance that could could be for all of these women makes it even more disgusting. And. So for me, and then I immediately noticed how people, there was this real interesting reaction to that, where people were essentially saying, we don't have time, like, wh how did we go from talking about, you know, criminal, you know, uh, social justice to now talking about uh, rape culture and things like that? And I want everybody to understand some shit. There is room. There is no cap on how many topics can be spoken on amongst the internet, amongst the world. This we make things so damn finite. We make things so narrow. Like I get it. People have very low attention spans. I get that people, you know, can't focus, can multitask, all that shit. But that's one thing that we pressure the powers that be to do. Like you guys can do your whole little international business and diplomats and, you know, figure out things with energy and coal and all that nonsense. But also fuck with us. Give us what we need that we've been asking for at the same time. We have to be able to chew gum and walk, you know, and I think we can't push that to the powers that be without practicing that in, our, in ourselves. If you as a black man sit here saying that you are king of the hill, head of the household, king of all things and so on and so forth, um, then how in the hell is that the one thing that you're going to draw the line on when it comes to problem solving and taking care of home? And I think that's the one thing that we need to do better at, taking care of home. Um, we can't just shut it out. We can't dismiss it. We forever dismiss it. We forever dismiss women. We forever dismiss uh, our LGBTQIA plus uh, brothers and sisters when they have issues that they want to present to us, when they want to point out some of the things that we have fucked up on and haven't done or have, have treated them badly on, I'm not speaking to everybody on this because I, I'm not, I don't believe I'm the person who should speak to black women specifically um, about what they can do differently um, in those cases. I'm speaking to black men. I'm a black man. We all, we all, it was a million posts. Y'all all claimed y'all black manness and had a whole lot of lofty shit to say, which is cool and that is okay. But now we got to widen our scope. We got to now understand that we can now hear the people that we are closest to, that we, that are telling us that we have caused them harm. And more than likely, we were the first person to cause them harm before they even met a white man that they did not like. It was us doing something to them. And that's a problem. We shouldn't see that as something that we should just keep sweeping under the rug, which is what we've been doing. And we can't continue to allow that to happen. And we especially can't expect a group of people in this country to push ahead and do everything we ask them to do when we can't even do it in our own communities. When we push it to the side in our own communities, we're co-opting their behavior and literally <laughs> repeating it and perpetuating it within our own culture, which that shouldn't even be something that we even want to hold. Let that shit go. Widen your scope. We are smarter than that. We can do more than that. We have more time than what we're giving. We, we have way more time, way more bandwidth than we're giving ourselves credit to do. We're just not, we're just, we just genuine. What it really is, is you really just don't want to 
admit to the shit. I get it. I get it. I get it. I get it. But let me go through a few of these uh, kind of, you know, particular stats and then just, you know, kind of and then get y'all to this. Send it on, you know, to give you all this call of action that I have for all of y'all. So let me read a little bit from this uh, particular data that I found. And uh, what was dope was um, in the 20 years of kind of data collections that they took when it came to this particular topic, when it came to intimate partner violence, they noticed that there was a definite decrease from in the past 20 years from 95 to 2015, which is great, which is dope. Makes you think how, you know, is that a, that's a trend in the right direction, right? Um, you would think, you would think. Uh, but we're talking about things that were, you know, they split it up. Obviously, women were the um, majority in, intimate partner victims. When it comes to men, it was um, in 95, it was about 2.8. Um, this is rated per thousand people. And then you have it was 15.5 uh, in 95. And that has went down. Um, that went down to about 5.4 in 2015. I'm not sure what the exact numbers are um, for the current years. <laughs> I can only imagine. Um, but what's interesting about that, and when you look at the reported data, the, when it comes to reported data, the percent of victimizations reported to the police, it has been somewhat slightly, it's been slightly rising. Now, what I believe it, that what this data is telling me, how I'm analyzing this, is that Things became taboo. Certain things started to become taboo to do it out in public. <laughs> I think there was a time where I think there was a time very long ago, not that long ago, excuse me, where men thought that they could essentially do whatever they wanted to do with women. They thought that women were their property. I believe it actually was in some type of legislation that that is exactly how it was written when it came to marriage law. That that is what our wives and children were to uh, to us. And that is the way that they were being treated as well. And so anything was happening. Literally, the question of how, you can't even rape your wife was a question is still a question that's on some people's minds that are not even that old, um, which is a fucking trip to me. But <laughs> that that's even a question. But I, what I believe occurred is since reporting started to steadily increase, uh, I believe those, you know, those services those resources that um, that being becoming a well-known fact of this is happening and this is happening at a very, you know, high rate uh, is what more than likely made people calm the fuck down <laughs> um, because they didn't want to go to jail um, because they knew that they would, had resources, had people to call, had things to do. Um, but I digress to keep moving with the data. The thing that was most interesting about this data is that the highest kind of performed uh, sense of intimate violence and intimate violence is particularly thinking about people who are, you know, family members, your uh, part, you know, your romantic partners, things like that. Psychological aggression and psychological violence was the top one in all of these different things um, when it came to that being a factor to calculate which I think is very interesting, which I want everybody to understand. This is the examples of gaslighting. This is examples of, you know, just being very dismissive and extremely dismissive. These are so many different things kind of packed up into that, um, which creates this kind of psychological aggression that psychological um, that those things count as well. Not just straight up, you know, psychological, verbal and verbal abuse and things like that. And just, you know, forever not forever, just kind of coming down hard and, and 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 chastising and just speaking aggressively and speaking abusively to your partner. It's also those other things as well, those kind of toxic tactics that I think we are now having way more vocabulary and way more conversations about now. Um, when it comes to uh, the data, when it comes to amongst the races, black men, <laughs> black men are the... Uh, kind of the I guess the still kind of in the mid range for the most part um, for most things uh, actually American Indians 
and Alaskan natives are actually the most when it comes to psychological aggression. Uh, when it, and also, yeah, psychological aggression, multicultural, which I'm not sure exactly what that means. But I was just assuming just mixed people, which is kind of interesting. Um, is uh 51% when it comes to physical violence. Uh, 51. Uh, yeah, 51% when it comes to physical violence. And when we talk about the data for black men, we're about 53.8% when it comes to psychological violence. And we have 41.2% when it comes to physical violence and 31.8% when it comes to contact sexual violence. And contact sexual violence, uh, for anyone who needs that definition is essentially rape, coercion, you know, sexual assault in its various forms. Um, then, then we see, let me see, what's this, what's this, what's this? Another particular thing that was interesting to me was they, and this is where I kind of thought about, you know, and I'm glad that's why I love this data because it was somewhat, somewhat um, all comprehensive. And it was spoke to um, intimate partners and intimate partner violence when it comes to uh, it included, you know, the LGBTQIA community. Uh, and it says in 2015, the National Coalition of National Violence uh, programs collected information from about 2000 LGBTQ uh, and HIV affected individuals um, who have been victims of intimate partner violence. Uh, of these, 43% identified as gay, 19% as lesbian, 10% as bisexual, and 9% as queer, and 41% were under 30 years old, while 30% were aged 30 to 39. Um, and they've already experienced that. Um, and then you've seen when it came to men and women, <laughs> the majority of people who have experienced some type of partner, intimate, viol intimate partner violence, experienced it before the age of 25, which is fucking ridiculous. But this is the point that I'm making. I think that's enough data because I really want to just get to this point. And that is um, not only have we co-opted this mindset, uh, not only have we co-opted this mindset, but I think um, I believe that we have essentially just truly co-opted this very antiquated way of thinking that has truly put us in a position to where we are now the main oppressors. We cannot just push it off, push it on. We are now the ones committing and perpetuating so much of this oppression to the people that we quote unquote say that we care the most for. Now I get it. We are an oppressed group. We are, we do have these, this, this, this fucking monkey on our back, but I believe that we have to, make do and, 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 and resolve this in the best way we can. I believe uh, acknowledgement, awareness and admitting to the acts that you've occurred, the acts that you've committed are the best way to uh, the best road to redemption, the best road to uh, forgiveness, the best road to so many different things. If we continuously stay in this spot of that, we didn't do nothing and we need to be kind of protected because we are being killed in the streets. I believe for me, I don't want I don't want a fucking flocking, a flocking of I love black men only when black men are being killed in the streets. Do you understand what I'm saying? Like, I really don't like that. I, I, I don't know why it made me feel so many ways seeing that. And it was like, I know where this is coming from. I understand that women are truly, truly um, a very communal in, in terms of thinking, very empathetic, where it's like, this is happening, this happened to this black man, and I can only imagine how other black men feel right now. But the fact of the matter is, it's so much erasure happening. Breonna Taylor, we, people are counting down the days. I think we're up to about 93 days since she was shot and killed in her own home by officers who have yet to be arrested. And it's so often that, you know, these things are happening so often that we sweep certain people under the rug hence why hashtag say her name was a something that we have to do why hashtag black trans lives matters is something we have to do but the thing about it is what i want everybody to recognize is that black lives matters was an all-encompassing hashtag it should have been the three women who came up with that hashtag 
seem to be very thoughtful about saying that. Not saying specifically black men, not saying specifically black women. They thought about every damn body. But yet, it somewhat has only really meant the black men who have been slain by police, um, who have been unarmed and been slain by the police. Um, and that's not really what's happened. That's not the reality that it is. There are so many people of so many various identities within blackness that are being killed by the police and also being killed by us, by black men, violently killed by us as well. <laughs> so I get it. Police are the fucking enemy at this point because they have yet to reform their ways and treat us any differently. But how can they, when this was the whole reason for them to be begin in the first place, was to protect the property and to catch slaves, which we were property. So, I want everybody to understand something. It's never too late to rectify and truly to rectify no matter what age you're at. We have to make moves. We have to change our paradigm. We have to understand that we've done certain things that have caused harm to people that we love. And we should rectify that as soon as fucking possible. And if you can't make peace with it because that person is not here and you know for a fact you caused them harm, then try your best to do it symbolically in some way, shape or form. Um, that's what I believe it needs to happen. We have to make room for it. If we are, quote unquote, the, the, the leaders and men that we say that we are and to say that we can be and so on and so forth, that we're trying to change narratives and all that type of shit, what we're not doing it's trying to continue some respectability. All traditions, all isms need to be broken the fuck down. They all need to be deleted out this world. So why try to perpetuate something by canceling it out, by saying we don't have time? This whole thing that we're, that's happening right now, there is no end date for it. No one knows when, when social justice will be something that can calm down. So we have to make room. We have to make room and especially make room for the people within our own communities. Let's make Black Lives Matters mean just that, mean that black lives matter. OK, but now let's send it on. So the send it on, um, which is my call to action segment, I've already uh, put an example out of what I would love for all the men who are listening. And if they're all my female listeners and, and my non-binary listeners who um, are listening, I would love, would love, would love if you can share this with uh, the cishet men in your life. But uh, I want all men to uh, tweet out and display a gesture of, of mass accountability. Um, I believe we can all just show that, you know, show and speak to this intra oppression that we are the biggest culprits of. I gave an example. If you go to the hashtag black men admit, you'll see my uh, um, Twitter name pop up. And um, as you see those tweets, that, that tweet thread, um, let's hold each other accountable. Also, that's the next uh, send it on call to action. Let's hold each other accountable. Um, let's truly. Let's truly figure out and feel what we need to do when it comes to improving each other. Let's not improve so quietly and silently. Let's truly if we know that we're moving on, we're changing certain habits, we're letting go of fuckboy ways, we're you know, taking care of our responsibilities. Don't let your friends around you and the people around you who you call your brothers or your cousins or whomever, um, let them continue their behavior that you maybe was doing now that you reformed in some way, shape or form. Don't leave them behind. Let it be known that, Hey, this is what we own now. Get on it or be left. Um, let's stop with this loyalty shit. Let's stop with this whole, that's that man's business. I can't do nothing. That's that man's business. Because the fact of the matter is, is that that man's business is beating on his wife. 
That man's business is raping his nieces and nephews and possibly even his fucking daughter or his stepdaughter. Whatever the case may be, we aren't doing any enough about this. And yes, there are cases where people are, you know, dealing with this <laughs> and with more violence um, within families and things like that. If they if they are even spoken to or reported. Uh, but it's so much shit happening amongst our families. We all the, the joke, the running joke of the, you know, the creepy uncle is something that we need to put to rest. Either lock his ass up or get him help. If he's that, if it's that, if it's like that and it's generational, we really just going to sit here and continue to let it happen. That's the issue. That's the problem. And I understand. I know where it comes from. I know we all hurt people, hurt people. But the last thing we need to do is continue on being the main oppressors of the people that we call our loved ones. So today you can call me self-righteous. You can call me pandering to women. You can call me a lot of shit without what you can say is that I'm not holding myself accountable when it comes to this. And that I'm not putting limits on what liberation and what freedom and what justice looks like. It's not just about black and whiteness. The fact that the black and whiteness where we are now is a symptom of the black and whiteness. The way that how hard they are on us when we go out into the world and the expectations that are put on to black men and so on and so forth, mixed in with our own personal issues, mixed in with with our own, you know, untapped and unhandled issues and trauma and and just, you know, environmental shit, all those different things adds up to make us then manifest violence onto the people who are closest to us. And I understand as the data shows, everyone does it. This country is pretty fucking violent, but what we can't be is the, we can't be, we can, we don't have to follow every trend. We don't follow a lot of trends. We set a lot of trends. So let's set a new one. Let's change the paradigm. Let's shift this shit up. So that's what I say. That's what we do. I would love to hopefully for this thread to be something that can be really healing and be a safe space for all the men who want to really come out and admit some of those wrongs that they've committed because we've all done something and it's on you on how far and how deep you want to expose your own uh, transgressions. But I advise you to, or at least publicly, but I still advise you to still handle those things in your own time in whatever way that makes sense. Please take the time. Um, I appreciate you all for joining, joining me for this episode. I'm not sure. Uh, I have more to come when it comes to simply being serious. I really enjoy doing them, but also I would really, 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 really appreciate you sharing this episode with a man that, you know, with women that, you know, with every type of person that, you know, she, her, they, them, whoever they are, wherever they are, uh, especially during this time, I really I, I don't know why it's kind of hard for me to just continuously make content that isn't that's solely about, you know, the, 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 the murdering of us. I have to find a way to make something beneficial and something where it gives us hope, something that gives us perspective, because I'd be damned if I sit here and wallow and feel fearful. I need us all to feel good. I need us all to feel better. I'm sorry for the things I've done. I'm sorry for the wrongs that I've committed. And I will stand in that accountability because if I don't, who the hell will? Someone has to start. Someone has to do that. That needs to be a trend. That's something that we can do. And I get it. I get it. I get it. I'm the, I guess, the serious guy, the one who's not making shit fun, the one who's now stirring up the pot. Well, now you have somebody who is not in any of these categories that are speaking to how we need to bring these things into the conversation. And I'm calling my own brothers out right now to do the damn thing. And if you hear this and you don't do this, that's on you. I'm not going to feel any other way for you. But understand that this is my stance. This is what I feel. And this is what I'm going to do um, because we need to get we need to get a handle on this. We need to change those narratives. That's what I feel.
If you haven't already, subscribe to the Simply King podcast. You can subscribe uh, everywhere podcasts are available. Uh, make sure you like, review, make sure you follow. Uh, uh, make sure you also share. This is family size content. I'm giving it to you. And I'm going to continue to give more and more more uh, auxiliary content accompaniments on IG where you can, you know, interact and be a part of the episode or be a part of, you know, what I speak to in the episode. Uh, if you have suggestions and if you really, um, if you really have issues, all men who have any issues with what I'm saying, you can certainly reach out to me. We can have that dialogue. If you really feel what I'm saying, but you don't know how to approach the situation and really uh and get to that point of being able to resolve your feelings around it uh because you just never even thought about it but you've always had a feeling that you needed to do something needed to find some type of way to get some type of re redemption for whatever it is that you did i advise you to i'm opening my door for you to dm me to email me we can get through this shit together no matter how hard of what whatever fucked up thing you did we need to figure that out we need to make amends we need to make Something work. Make something happen. You have somebody in your corner. You're not alone in this. It's been all of us are vic all of us are contributors to the nonsense. So you're not alone. But we can all get it right together. That's what I feel. Um like I said, hashtag is black men, hashtag black men admit for this episode. Make sure you go to the tweets. Uh I truly, truly hope that it sets off and I truly hope that it really does some really good work um, and some real healing for us. It makes us just stronger as a community. I really believe in this. Um, and I really continue to, I'll continue to push this and remind everybody of this uh, every chance I get. Um, if you don't know, you can follow me everywhere at simply Kings underscore memoirs. You can follow the page at simply King pod. Um, make sure that you, uh, Oh, yeah, make sure that you catch me on live. I'm going to do more lives on my Kings underscore memoirs page. And I'm not starting to, you know, I'm not going to get on live on my uh, on my IG Simply King Pie page until I get to a grand. Until I get 1K in followers, that's the only way I'm going to do that with that page. That's the only way we're going to have to set, create some type of separation. So go follow if you don't already follow. If you've been listening for a while and haven't been following that, make sure you go follow. Um I appreciate y'all. Um, this is the Soulfully Conscious Podcast for Humans, Simply Being Humans. I'm Rodney Perry, and this is Simply King.